and welcome to Be Your Own Guru. This is Elisa Di Napoli. Now, today I want to talk a little bit about what you can do when you are stuck with a negative thought that keeps on coming to you. Now, like I said many times before, thoughts are just thoughts. But sometimes they seem pretty convincing. So what are the kind of questions you can ask yourself to help you figure out whether it is, is something that's serving you or not, whether to cling on to it and pay attention to it and put your energy into it, or simply let it be a passing thing, you know, like a cloud in the sky just passing in and out of your awareness. So one of the first questions uh, that works for some people are, um, is this thought rational or logical? Uh, this doesn't work for everybody, but it does work for people that are quite logical and rational in other areas of their lives. Where is that conclusion written or carved in stone? What reason is there to believe this statement? Is that a valid reason? Again, for those of you who are, are quite logical, rational thinking people, is what evidence is there for this belief? And what evidence is there against this belief? Is this belief 100% accurate and realistic? If you could strip away all the value judgments, what would be left? Now, the next question, personally, one of my favorites, because it really works well for me, is, is this thought helpful? How is this helpful? Is this helping me or not? What's a more helpful way of thinking about this? You know, where is this attitude getting me? What would be a more constructive belief? And what would happen if I believed it 100%? What would be a more constructive way of dealing with the situation? Is this just my perspective on things? Am I just thinking emotionally? Because I'm feeling bad right now, I'm assuming that my feeling um, means that what I'm thinking is right. If I was feeling differently, would I think about this in a different way? Another way of looking at this is asking yourself what's an alternative way of looking at the situation. So. You know, imagine someone dealing constructively with this situation and coping well. What would they be doing? What would they be saying to themselves? You know, what does it look like that they're thinking? And what would uh, the ideal sage, you know, the Buddha, Muhammad, Jesus, Mother Teresa, what would that sage say to you right now? Another way of putting things into perspective is looking at them in time. So asking yourself, would this be looking as bad in six months' time, a year's time, ten years' time? You know, would it be as important to me then? This allows you to put a bit of perspective on things when you're catastrophizing. You know, will you still believe that in ten years' time? Imagine yourself having overcome these problems. What would your future self say to yourself looking back at you now? What would your future self say to you about the negative belief? Is that really true? Imagine that you're standing outside of things and you're looking at your whole life from beginning to end. What would you think about that belief? Really imagine it now. Do it now. What would you think about that belief from that perspective? Another one to look out for is the tendency for perfectionism. You know, you are you demanding of yourself to be perfect, which is clearly impossible, instead of just a fallible human being who learns from their mistakes. How much is that perfectionism actually hindering you in achieving those goals that you want so bad? Wouldn't it be better to just be encouraging to yourself and celebrate your successes instead? Wouldn't that make you feel better so that you'd have more energy to actually put into practice your plans? Also, you know, there is a tendency of to catastrophize, awful lies. You know, are you making a mountain out of a, mo a molehill here? Are you exaggerating? Are you generalizing? Are you saying to yourself, oh, because I have failed today at this exam, I will always fail and I'll never amount to anything? Hmm, that's a bit of a generalization going there. Another way of dealing with decatastrophizing is to ask yourself, okay, what's the worst possible scenario? How likely is this to actually happen on a scale of 0 to 10? Then ask yourself, what's the best case scenario and how likely is that to happen on a scale of 0 to 10? Now, what's the most realistic scenario? 
You might find that that's something in the middle. So you were doing the black and white thing of it's either a disaster or an amazing, wonderful outcome. Usually the truth is a bit in the middle, shades of gray. Here's one that's really good for when you think that other people think things about you that may or may not be true. Ask yourself, how do I really know that that's what they're thinking? Have you asked them? What would it be like to actually suspend judgment and ask the question? Ask for facts before you decide whether your assumption is right or wrong. Now, this is one for um, what I call low frustration tolerance. When you say to yourself things like, oh, I can't bear it, I wouldn't bear it. Now, if this thing happened, would it really be the end of the world? Would the sun still go up in the morning? Is this really something that you couldn't stand? It would be something that you prefer for it not to happen, but it's not going to be the end of the world if it did. You know, if you can't stand it, will you really fall apart? You know, how do you know you can't stand it? Maybe you're underestimating yourself. Now, the next one's really interesting because it's something that a lot of depressed people do. They discount the positive and exaggerate the negative. They take too much responsibility for things that have gone wrong and not enough for things that have gone right. So when something happens that's good, it's never because of them. And when something has happened that's bad, it's always because of them. That is a cognitive distortion. You know, you're concentrating on your own weaknesses and concentrating on other people's strengths. Everybody else's life is wonderful. While you're being dismissive of anything that contradicts your position, your belief. Another one to look out for is if you're being very self-critical, is ask yourself, would I judge my own son, my own daughter, someone that I love dearly so harshly? What would I say to them if they were in this situation? Would I be so critical and harsh with them as well? Or would I be encouraging and kind and compassionate? Now, one of my favorites is shootism. This is really a pet hate of mine. I can't stand it when people say, or I say, I should do this, I should have done that. Should, should, should. Now, there's nothing worse than shouldism, because shouldism makes you wrong. You know, should doesn't really work. What if you changed every should in your life with could? Could implies a choice and no blame. It's your choice. You don't have to do anything. You choose to do something versus something else. Are you agonizing over what should be rather than looking and dealing at what actually is? How helpful is that? You know, are you placing unrealistic rules on yourself and other people? How helpful is that? Is that going to get you closer to your goals? Are your demands flexible? What would happen if you change them? What would make you change them? Are your demands realistic? Now watch out for when your thoughts are particularly extreme. It's either this or that, you know, that's black and white thinking. And black and white thinking is really something that is not gonna help you. Are there any exceptions to what you're thinking? What are the examples of when that's not true? You know, I'm not good at anything. It's a bit of an overgeneralization. Is that really true? Are you not good at anything at all? You know, can you think of any circumstances where that doesn't hold true? Why are you making an overgeneralization? Where does that come from? And where does that get you? Labeling is another one. You know, watch out for that. You know, oh, I'm an idiot. Or oh, they're all idiots. Labeling. Not really helpful, is it? It puts you in that corner where you just can't move. Is it fair to do so? Just because a problem has happened, does it really mean that you're a failure or stupid? You know, are you blaming other people or yourself unfairly? Are you taking things too personally? I mean, to be honest, a lot of the time, almost all of the time, most things people do or say are not to be taken personally. They are more to do with them and what they are perceiving than you. Often, you know, even if someone is rude to you, oftentimes they are doing it because of a projection of what you represent to them. It's not actually about you at all. It's about their own insecurities. And so this applies to you as well. If you tend to blame other people, 
You know, what's really going on? What, what is it that you're not looking in yourself? You know, who's responsible for this? What's the percentage? You know, let's look at it fairly. Chances are there's not just one person's fault. Probably there is a percentage of responsibility among all the parties involved. So these are just some of the questions you can ask yourself when you're stuck in that negative loop um, so that you recognize that your thoughts are just thoughts and you don't have to hold on to every single one of them or believe every single one of them. You can decide which ones work for you, which ones are most helpful, which ones are going to get you feeling the best or closer to your goals. So let me know how you go with these. And thank you for listening and see you next time.